Today I wanted to talk about tactical advertising. Uh, some people even call this real-time marketing and it's been a big trend in the last 12 months, most memorably started by Oreo who during the Super Bowl 2013 grabbed a huge amount of instant credit and PR and, and loads of ad awards ultimately for when there was a blackout in the stadium within minutes they'd approved and launched a piece of creative saying you can still dunk in the dark and that 24 character tweet and the image that went with it approved in less than 10 minutes scooped their million dollar Super Bowl TV ad which would take a month for them to make and uh, their tweeted picture got ultimately about 10,000 retweets in the first hour alone and off the back of that Twitter actually found its own place in advertising and has been out there saying look brands shouldn't be trying to pin down target audiences they should be targeting moments in consumers lives and be very time specific so this uh, real-time marketing has been a big area of interest uh, in 2013 into 2014 and planning your creative around these moments in consumers lives is a great way of connecting with them instead of just talking at them about your brands you're getting into their life and talking about what's important to them right now so if you do want to plan for those moments, of course, there tends to be about three types, if you like. On the one hand, you've got events that we know are happening in advance, like Valentine's Day, April Fool's Day, and such events. On the second case, we have events that we know are happening, but we don't know how they'll pan out. And Oreo is actually an example of that, because the Oreo team, the agencies and the client, had set up a war room and were planning to tweet throughout the Super Bowl and they just happened to take advantage of it and do it really successfully. So it was, uh, it was planned out, but then reacted to. And the final category is where things are totally unexpected. And the most famous recent example of this is in, in 2011, when in Sydney there was this kind of pseudo-apocalyptic dust storm, red dust storm. And uh, the very next day, Sydney newspapers featured all sorts of tactical ads from banks and telcos and a lot of cleaning brands. One of my favourites was from Omo. Uh, which played on this kind of apocalyptic feeling when you saw the dust storm and Omo's ad said a little bit of dust isn't the end of the world. So the recipe for great tactical ads requires a, a dose of planning, a hefty slab of creativity, but you also need your media to be high reach, quick turnaround and low production cost. And all of those things have always been a mainstay of news media, so you know, where else can you get five million plus people over the course of a single weekend? Some of our favourite newspaper tactical ads include an IKEA Valentine's Day message which featured a picture of a cot and said, free cot for any babies born nine months from today. We also will remember Angostura ran an ad when Kevin Rudd got deposed for the first time which said, Kev, it's okay to be a little bitter. Likewise, when Obama got elected and we said goodbye to George W, Veep ran an ad that simply said, goodbye Bush. And only in New Zealand, an even more controversial ad is from a brand of pizza called Hell's Pizza, who when Osama Bin Laden was found and killed, ran an ad the next day saying, Osama Bin Laden, come in, we've been expecting you. Hell Pizza. But if you think about what all these examples have in common, it is that high reach in those newspaper environments, a low production cost, a really quick turnaround, and all of those brands are able to capture a moment in an interesting or amusing way to engage that target audience. Um, and at a much higher reach than you might get if you've got a small to middling social media presence. And I think that news media give you this instant access to millions of people and are probably the perfect environment to run tactical, newsworthy ads.